the young girl's clothes were slowly removed. Her face shows a look of fascination. The timing and atmosphere are just right. A man from China and a young girl from France start a hidden love story in a small, dark room. They first meet on a ferry. The young girl Jane is wearing a simple white dress. She rests her long, slender legs on the railing. Her delicate face shows an inappropriate maturity for her age. The young girl's lonely back looking at the scenery attracted the richest man in the city. Tony walked slowly up to the girl. His off-handed approach to her revealed his nervousness at the moment. Jane only glanced at him. She wasn't about to pay any attention to this strange man. Until Tony inadvertently said his address, Jane knew it was a place where only the rich could live. She immediately changed her indifferent attitude. Tony invited Jane to ride in his car. Of course, Jane didn't refuse. The two of them were so nervous in the small space that it was as if they were suffering from aphasia. Neither of them knew how to speak. Jane turned her head out the window but didn't care to look at the scenery. Tony had the audacity to move his hand slowly towards Jane's little finger. Jane did not resist, so Tony got up the courage to take Jane's whole hand in his. Jane's heart missed half a beat. Her eyes were dazed and her red lips were slightly open. Both of them in the gradually hot air are immersed in this ambiguous interest. Until the car stopped in front of Jane's school, Jane woke up from her dream and ran away. The next day Jane saw Tony's car parked in front of her school again when she passed by. She slowly walked up to the car window and planted a long kiss on the car window. But Tony was sitting inside the car at the moment. The kiss made his throat roll for a long time. Tony took Jane into a small room in a downtown area. This is where he had been having fun with his other lovers. He brought Jane to the purpose. I think we should understand. But after he heard that Jane had never done this before, Tony could not bear to dirty this innocent girl. He was going to send the girl back. Jane, however, was very sure and wanted Tony to treat her as he did the other women. So Tony can no longer resist his inner desire. He carefully removes Jane's clothes. The man slapped his girlfriend in the face. He then roughly pushed her down on the bed and immediately removes her pants. He gave vent to his desire in a brutal manner because he hated the fact that his girlfriend was with him for money. He had asked Jane if she would be with him if he was poor. Jane, however, said she liked him the way he was now with money. Jane's words were both cruel and directly hurt the man's self-esteem. In fact, even Jane herself did not understand her own feelings. She was so arrogant. She enjoys the vanity of eating at high-class restaurants after being with Tony. On the other hand, she repeatedly stressed to Tony that her parents didn't like Chinese people. Tony is young and arrogant and refuses to be defeated. He said that no man in China would marry a woman who was not innocent. Jane said with a smile on her face that it would be a good idea. The two self-respecting people were gradually bruised and battered as they try each other again and again. From then on, Jane had no qualms about getting in and out of Tony's luxury car. She became Tony's lover in front of the whole school. Jane was hit in the arm by a child at school. Not only did she not receive an apology, instead, she heard the kids call her filthy behind her back. But Jane didn't care about that. Instead, she has more and more frequent contact with Tony. The two of them enjoyed their love in the dimly lit room. If they were tired, they would lie naked on the bed and let the sunlight from the blinds fall evenly on their young bodies. Outside, the sound of people coming and going. Inside, it's a different world. Jane seldom communicated with Tony. The two of them were doing the most intimate things in the world, yet they seemed to be the farthest apart. Jane's mother found out about her sleepless nights. Her mother angrily sent a telegram asking her where she was. Jane seemed very carefree. Her home environment was so bad. Her eccentric mother gave all her love to her big brother. Her older brother used to school her and her second brother. But her mother was oblivious. So for Jane, Tony's press was like a ray of sunshine and gave her a ray of hope in her dark life. Jane introduced Tony to her mother. When she heard that Tony's family was rich, she no longer objected to Jane dating him. Tony also warmly invited Jane's family to dinner at one of the city's finest restaurants. At the dinner table, Tony spoke eloquently about his family's business. He was eager to be more part of the family, but all he got was indifference from Jane's mother and her brother. Everyone else at the large table was eating with their heads down. Tony was the only one talking to himself. This brings the atmosphere down to a freezing point. Jane's family is poor, but they still have the arrogance of the white people. So they didn't think much of Tony. After they finished eating, Jane's older brother kept taunting Tony. They almost got into a fight. Jane did nothing to stop this. 
She acted as if she was watching a good show, as if only by doing so, her glass heart can be wrapped intact. Jane also danced with her brother on the dance floor afterwards. Their bodies were closed together without leaving a single gap. Tony looked on and was so angry that his eyes turned red. The young girl flirtatiously shifted her legs on the bed. There was something stubborn in her provocative behavior. How much is what we did worth? How much do you need? My mother needs 500 piastres. Tony got up took out his wallet and slammed the 500 on the floor in anger. Their relationship had been unorthodox from the start, and yet he expects the girl to have some real feelings for him. This is ridiculous. He didn't know that Jane had really given the money to her mother. Not only did the mother acquiesce to her daughter's body as a trade, she also took it upon herself to tell the teacher to please leave Jane's late nights alone in the future. The whole school knew that Jane had a sugar daddy. Some students' parents even called her a slut. But Jane didn't care about that. She was going back to France as soon as she graduated. When Tony heard that Jane was going to leave, he started to feel worried. He wanted to keep Jane. He wants to marry her in the Chinese way. But Tony was only spending his father's money. He had to bow down in front of the authority of the feudal parents. But he gave Jane the ring his mother had left him. He made a trip home for this purpose. And now before his father, Tony says he's in love with a French woman. But the negotiation, not surprisingly, ended in failure. His father had arranged for a rich woman to marry him. Tony found Jane to tell her of his love and affection. He did not want to lose the woman he truly loved because of the worthless dignity. But Jane's response is very light. She lightly told Tony the reason for her family's bankruptcy. Maybe it's the age difference, or maybe it's the disparity in family history. This girl does not want to think about whether she loves this man or not. She doesn't want to face the faded separation. The skinny girl shrank from the cold when it hunched her shoulders. Tony took off his jacket and draped it over her shoulders. The two of them look out over the vast farmland together to the sound of the waves. They stop talking. In the desperate silence, they both knew the end of their relationship. Separation would come eventually. The only thing they can do is to love each other. While they still come, Tony asked Jane to tell him over and over again that Jane is with Tony because of the money. The young girl said this over and over again. In the end, both of them were teary-eyed. Tony finally put on his wedding dress and married the bride he had never seen before. Jane stood outside the crowd and watched him quietly. Her face was expressionless, but she felt sad inside. The moment their eyes met was worth a thousand words. Some loves are addictive but must be abandoned. In the end, there is a kind of love that is only longer and more profound because they can't be together forever. Jane came to the room where they used to make love for the last time. There was no one here anymore. Jane watered the dry potted plants one last time. She Saturday alone in bed all night before returning. Soon the day came for her to return to France. Her mother told her that Tony had paid off all the debts for her family. Tony had also bought Jane's family tickets to France. Until the end, this man still did everything he could for Jane. On the day she returned to France, Jane leaned on the railing and looked at the embankment as she had done when she first met Tony. She looked anxious as if she was expecting Tony's appearance. Until the boat slowly departed, she finally saw Tony's familiar car around the corner. That was her most desperate concern. It was her hottest miss. Jane realized at that moment that she loved this Chinese man and she loved him deeply. But it was too late. She kept revealing all her arrogance to Tony. She refused to admit that she loved him as much as he did. But even if she admits this love, what can she do? The difference in status is the reason why the two lovers cannot be together for the rest of their lives. Beyond the film, Jane got married, had children, and got divorced. Tony has become a husband and father and is growing old in mediocrity, but they still love each other deeply. They even dialed the phone years later across Europe and Asia, although the greeting had not yet been said, but they both knew that the person on the other end of the line was each other. The silent thing is better than the spoken thing. The lovers who could not love each other left behind the most heartfelt love.